bow on sweat at its hiatus trail for a good evening. Mr. Bergeski here, lesson 5.4. We're talking about four sided polygons. 5, 4, and 5, 5 go together. So we're going to learn a lot of definitions from 5, 4. Then I'm going to ask you at the end of this video to fill out a chart in pencil because then you're going to erase and, and we're going to go over the chart together. But the, the more you memorize these words, uh, the better you will be at these questions. This is where a lot of things go wrong. So you might be able to get the proofs right in this lesson, but there's so many you know concepts of understanding uh, the rules for the four-sided figures that you will make mistakes, um, and it won't be good. So first off, we're going to define a polygon. Well, what is a polygon, you ask? It's got these criteria right here. Our plane figures. So that means they're two-dimensional. They're on the piece of paper, they're on the board, they're in the book. All right. They consist entirely of segments. So there's no rays, there's no lines, only segments. So it has to have a starting and an ending point, if you remember what a segment was. Consecutive sides intersect at a point. So the, when the two sides intersect, they're creating a point. Non-consecutive sides don't intersect. Okay, so that means the sides across from each other. So we're talking about like this side and this side. They don't intersect. Okay, they're not touching each other. And a vertex only belongs to two sides. So here's a vertex, two sides, there's a vertex. Two sides, there's a vertex. Two sides, there's a vertex. You can't have more than one vertex. You can't have them cross. So basically, thinking about it in a picture format, no curves. So this would be not a polygon. You're not allowed to have open spaces, so you could see these sides, but then there's no side here. But you can't have an open space, so that's not uh, a polygon. And then because they cross, you have lines that cross here. Um, you see that? If I drew lines in here that crossed, then it would end up not being a polygon also. Okay, does that kind of, you know, make sense? Okay. So then we're going to talk about closed figures here. What are closed figures? Closed figures are non-overlapping figures with straight lines. Okay, we all know lines are straight, but so they, they can't overlap like this picture right here. So that would not be a polygon because, you know, they're not allowed to overlap. Name a polygon. So how do you name a polygon? You start with a vertex and you name it clockwise. So if I started here and said this was A, B, C, D, E, F, I don't care which one I start at, I pick a spot and I go clockwise around it. So if I start at D, I would name this as D, E, F, A, B, C. Okay, do not skip around. You can't just pick and say what you choose. You have to start at a specular point and go clockwise. Convex, what does it mean to be convex? By the way, if you need to stop and pause this, you need to do that because it's going kind of quickly because it's already filled in for you. So a convex polygon, if you look at here, it, the each interior angle has a measure less than 180 degrees. So that means this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle are all less than 180 degrees. I have it visualized from a thing. So I think about if there's a little guy inside of here and he's trying to punch his way out, if he punches this, boom, and he punches that out, and he punches that out, and he punches that out, he punches each corner out. He can't get out still, but he punches each corner out, so they're like, you know, protruding out. That's convex to me. Versus concave polygon has an angle over 180 degrees. So when you look at these angles here, this angle here on the inside, this angle is over 180 degrees. You can tell by the way it loops around because like 180 would stop there, right? And then you still have that extraness right there. So it'd be over 180. But what you're able to say is to me, it's like somebody's on the outside trying to get in and boom, what do they do? sucker punch right there knock it in and so that's caving in so there's a, there's like you know something caving in but technically by its definition it has an angle over 180 degrees but you have to be able to look at them and say which ones are concave and convex concave caving in one of the angles convex they're all being punched out from the inside diagonals of a polygon any segment that contains two non-consecutive vertices so basically you know you could start with a four-sided figure all right, that's fine. 
That's a polygon. It's got the four sides, okay? But then diagonals, now we're connecting two non-consecutive sides, you know, vertices, right? Or boom to boom. So that would be a diagonal. A quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. Quad meaning four. So you have the, the idea of that's a four-sided polygon, just like we had a triangle, three angles. So we have, we're going, increasing to a four-sided figure. So we have a quadrilateral. And now we have our special four-sided um, quadrilaterals. We have a poly, uh, parallelogram. Parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So it's a four-sided figure. Both pairs, so these sides are parallel, these sides are parallel. That would be a parallelogram. There is a lot more things that consist of in there, and that's when this chart is coming in that you'll be able to fill out. A rectangle now is a parallelogram, so it has those sides, you know, parallel, in which at least one right angle exists. So you took the idea that it was a parallelogram, and you created one right angle. But not only are you going to have one right angle, it's going to come into four right angles because, you know, you have one. Well, these are going to be parallel, so then these are consecutive interior angles. These are consecutive interior angles. These are consecutive interior angles, and so on. You can keep going around in a circle and circle and circle and circle until you get dizzy and you fall down. But you know that consecutive interior angles are supplementary from the last unit. Rhombus now is a parallelogram, so it's part of the parallelogram family, in which at least two consecutive sides are congruent. So it's a parallelogram where sides are parallel, but instead of having right angles, consecutive sides are congruent. So not only consecutive sides are congruent, that means every time if you went here to here, they would be congruent, here to here would be congruent, here to here congruent, and then you could, once again you're going around in a circle and a circle and a circle. So that means all the sides would be congruent. Square is not on here, but if it would be, you, you would have the parallelogram, but it would be the parallelogram in which um, at least two consecutive sides would be congruent, but you'd also have at least one right angle. It'd have both of these two ideas put together that makes the square, which is perfect. The kite is a quadrilateral in which two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides are congruent. And we've talked about a kite. What was the special piece about a kite with, that we learned from 4.4? If you said perpendicular bisectors on the inside of it, give yourself a pat on the back because that is correct. Okay, because what did we have? You have the drawing of it, these sides, and these sides, so we know it was, it gave you that perpendicular bisector on the inside. Pat yourself on the back. Don't do it too hard. Just a little tap. A trapezoid. A trapezoid now is a quadrilateral with exactly, exactly only one pair of parallel sides. And those are going to be called the base. So these two are parallel. These two sides are not. That's a trapezoid. So it's different than a parallelogram. Parallelogram, both pairs are. The only one set is, then it's called a trapezoid. And we'll get into isosceles trapezoid too. And the difference between with the isosceles trapezoid, the isosceles trapezoid, the two sides that, that reached between the bases are going to be congruent. All right. So our goal here is to identify the polygons. So you're going to tell me yes or no. We'll look at it. Yes, because it's got four consecutive sides. It does, I mean, it doesn't matter how many sides it has, but they're all touching, and all of them are punched out, so it's convex. Same thing here, so it's convex. Here, all the sides are touching. There's no gap spaces, no curves, no crossing, so it's yes, concave, because this side right here is being caved in. Word. D, it's not a polygon, because you can see the curved edge, so it's not there. An example to identify the polygon state, whether it's convex or concave. Well, yes, you would say it is. But then what do you notice? These pieces are caving in, so it's concave. OK, this line right here doesn't exist. I don't know what it is. That's kind of like a, um, I don't know what it is, to be honest. And then the last one here, which you should know is not how many sides does it have? One, two, three, four, five. Do you know the name of a five-sided figure? Yeah. It is a pentagon. So the pentagon 
is convex because all the sides are out. Something else that you're going to have to memorize because you're going to get the angled pairs, and this will definitely contribute over into second semester when we do this. So if you have three sides, the polygon has three sides, it's called a triangle. We just learned if it's four-sided, it's a quadrilateral. Five sides, pentagon. How do you memorize that? There is a building in Washington, D.C. called the Pentagon that has five sides. Okay. Six is a hexagon. Six is spelled with the letter X. A hexagon is spelled with the letter X. So it's a hexagon for six. Seven is a heptagon. Heptagon. Okay. Heptagon. H-E-P-T-A-O-G-O-N. Eight, octagon, the ocho. All right. Octopus has eight legs. All right. Spiders have eight legs. Octagon. Nine, nonagon, nonagon. Ten, decagon. A decade is ten years, so it's a decagon. Twelve is a dodecagon. Do, dozen, dodecagon. N, that means anyone would be a nonagon. So if you said 13, 16, 18, 25, you put the number dash gone. All right. Um, and the last one our book uses is 15, which is a pentadecagon, putting, combining the idea of five and the decade together, pentadecagon for that. You have a chart that is the next page um, to, to fill in um, of the names. Use pencil because you're going to erase and figure out, read the statement and figure out which ones go to it. Okay. Uh, we will, we will get to that, you know, in the lesson and we'll have a little story time about it. But until then, you know, try it out on your own. See which ones you do know or have an idea that you can take from this vocabulary and put together um you know about especially here taking this vocabulary and figure out which ones you know consist of the the right ones and then we will you know get into the lesson because the more you know those the better off you'll be able to do the questions solving for x not with proofs but solving for x have a good night